Hi everybody, I'm Ali Tawakuli and this is part 12 of our UNR tutorial series, Package Diagram. So if you're ready, let's get started. Alright, packages group similar classes and that's all there is to a package. I mean, package diagram shows the dependencies between classes. So here is an example of a package diagram. Here is a package and an other package inside of it. Here we are actually showing uh, the packages and their dependencies. Here we're showing that uh, how we can show that a class belongs to a package. And here we're actually showing that uh, a pa how we can demonstrate that a package uh, actually depends on another package or a class inside of the another package. So let's first see for whom the uh, package diagram is. System designers and developers purpose to group classes of similar functionality to show the dependencies between classes. Important elements, package. Package is the only important element. Points to consider. Dependency arrows, which are in two types mainly, import and access that uh, show that a uh, package depends on another package or a class inside of another package which we have shown and explained it in the diagram above and the only difference between the import and access dependency arrows is that imported elements by import arrows have public visibility in the importing package so they can get passed on with further imports whereas accessed elements uh, that will be shown by the access arrow cannot let's put it in an example imagine we have three packages a b and c a imports b and b imports c now if b imports uh, actually uses access instead of import arrow while importing c then a cannot access the c package but if B has used the import arrow while importing C, then A could also access the C package, although it didn't uh, uh, import it directly. So, all right. And well, let me also mention that uh, many modelers don't bother about using import or access dependency arrows. They just use a generic dependency arrow without mentioning its type. So if you think it's just so much and it's actually unnecessary, you can also ignore it. Now let's take a look at the next important thing that we need to consider while drawing package diagrams, which is writing down the package name when we're mentioning a class in our class diagrams. So why we need to do that? Well, maybe in a class diagram, we're using different classes with the same name. So by mentioning the package name, we can distinguish them from one another. And another important fact that we need to consider is that we should avoid cyc uh, cyclical package dependencies. This is actually a really important fact uh, while and uh, developing and programming a software system because it helps us to have a stable product and easy to upgrade. So when do we have a cyclical package dependency? Well, imagine that we have package A which depends on package B and B also depends on A. This is a cyclical package dependency and is not good because a change in one package heavily affects the other one. So how to avoid this? Well, we should consider depending in the order of stability. I mean, a package should depend only on packages more stable than itself. In this way, an unstable package depends on many other packages and a stable package depends on few packages. So this is how we can solve the cyclical package dependency problem. Now, what are the steps to draw a package diagram? It's easy. 
draw the package diagram uh, we, do, we just think about different pieces of our project find out what classes related to each other and put them in one package then with dependency arrows show what in packages import other packages in the system now let's go up here and take a look at our package diagram examples in this example over here, we're showing that we can draw as many packages as we like inside another package. But we can also demonstrate them through a naming convention and flatten all of them like this. So I could, I could also draw the com package and inside of it the my, pa my site package and inside of it resources package and then I could draw the assets package. But I have flattened all of these three packages and only have drawn the assets package. This is good for a, a easy uh, package diagram drawing. Now let's take a look at this example over here, which I try to uh, demonstrate the dependencies. Here, resources, GUI, and views packages depend on utils package, and the utils package itself doesn't depend on any other packages. The views package depends on emails and emails depends on partials. Now, let's take a look at this example over here, which I try to demonstrate how we can show that a class belongs to a specific package in the class diagram. We can show it like this. We can also show it like this or like this. In this example, also, I try to demonstrate that uh, how a package depends on a specific class in another package. So, in our example here, the GUI package depends or, let me say, imports the alert class in the utils package. So, that's all there is to the package diagram. I hope you enjoyed it. And please don't forget to subscribe uh, to be notified of our upcoming tutorials. And that's it all about the package diagram. We'll see you in our next tutorial in the UML tutorial series. So, see you soon.